it's about that time for another running shoe, yay or nay? Today we're going to be examining some up and coming running shoes and I'm going to let you know if I'm going to be shelling out to test them or if I'm going to be leaving them on the virtual shelves. Remember this show isn't to say I think the shoe's terrible or brilliant or whatever, just whether I'm going to be testing them out and my reasoning behind that. If you're enjoying the content here on the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos. You can also go and follow me on Strava and Instagram, links to which are in the description of this video. Let's get to it. Shoe number one is from Saucony, the Freedom 4. So quite a redesign here of the Saucony Freedom line. Most importantly, switching the midsole out to the Power Run PB stuff that we find in the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed. This news will no doubt excite many a runner. Certainly they seem to be going in the opposite direction to Nike, where they're increasing the widths of their midsoles and the stack heights. Saucony here are switching up to much lighter midsole materials. Looks like quite a speedy daily shoe this one. The outsole pattern certainly looks something reminiscent of that that we will find on the Endorphin Pro and Speed. Though this shoe is releasing in the spring, so perhaps it'll be avoiding that winter wet weather, which I found to be a bit of the Achilles heel for that outsole. In the UK, it's something we have to worry about all the time. If you live here, you know that that any day it could rain. So that switch from Power Run Plus to PB is quite a big one. Certainly gonna lower the weight of the shoe from the previous iteration. And this could place the Freedom 4 into that sort of run fast two daily tempo shoe category. Just lighter daily training is a good thing. Always a good thing. There's even some suede touches there. And you know I like suede. So this is a big yay from me for the Saucony Freedom 4. Shoe two is from Kraft. There's certainly some animal related vibes there in the soon to be released Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon. Did remind me of a zebra crossing a little bit. This one's got Kraft's Vault midsole material. I think they should have had it as Vault as in electrical sort of stuff rather than vaulting. I just think it sounds better. Apparently this one has a tuned carbon plate. I wonder what note they've tuned it to. Hopefully it'll be a sharp rather than a flat. Kraft do suggest this is both a training shoe and a racing shoe, which is always good to hear. I believe they're set for launch globally on the 21st of January, so not long to wait. I gotta be honest, aesthetically, I'm not sure this one's doing too much for me. I don't really like sort of black and white clothes. Oh, mm, some black and white clothes maybe. But, you know, it's just first world problems, isn't it? This one reportedly for a US size 9 weighs in at 9.8 ounces. So it certainly sounds a little heavier, though does appear to be quite a bit more stable than some of the other carbon plate offerings. There's certainly a serious stack to the shoe in the heel there. It's quite massive, in fact. And interestingly, this one will come complete with an insole, which is very similar to the one found in the Innovate G270. I've been experimenting with that insole recently in other shoes, and it makes a massive difference. Go and buy a a pair of those insoles and see what you think. The outsole here are some significantly deeper lugs than we'll find on a lot of other carbon plate offerings of recent time, which means it's going to be pretty versatile and you'll be able to take on even some trails, I would assume, in this shoe. Certainly all of Kraft's advertising show this shoe as being able to be used on the road and also into trails. It's quite a few details actually that do remind me of a few other shoes. So in the midsole stack there and the geometry of it remind me of the midsole in the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. And there's a few other nods there to the Innovate G270. I think this Vault stuff's an EVA based material. I'm keen to see how it shapes up, but for the moment, I think I'm gonna say it's a nay. I don't really see anything stand out here that I really need in my running lineup. Nothing different to what I've already got in the RC Elite from New Balance, or the Tempo Next Percent perhaps from Nike. So we call the horse out on this one. You know, 277 grams for a US size nine, it's right up there in terms of weight. But I'm not gonna say it's a definite no, just uh, for the time being. Shoe three is the ASICS EVO Ride 2. Here we have a few small changes in the upper and the midsole. Hopefully this one will make the EVO Ride a little bit more fitting than its predecessor. There's significantly less padding in there, that's for sure. The tongue in the first one always reminded me of something you'd find on a skater shoe. It looks more like the tongue on the Nike SB range. I found the EVO Ride original was quite roomy in the toe box, just too much upper material there. Here's hoping that the ASICs can dial in the uppers on their shoes in 2021. I think the original was okay, it was nothing to really write home about. I think the Glide Ride was the better of those two shoes in that kind of ASIC section. I think they've switched the foam back to flight foam 
from Flight Foam Propel. Took me 30 times to say that, bit of a tongue twister. That was one of the things that really stuck out for me about that shoe. I kind of like the foam in there. Let's hope it doesn't ruin the feel. I think there's a load of other daily shoes that have got much more innovative foam right now, like the Freedom 4, for example. So for the Evo Ride 2, it's gonna be a nay from the shoe four. It's from Brooks. The Launch 8 has just been released over in the US. Hopefully we'll come over here to the UK. Brooks is a company that release some solid shoes and I think the Launch is gonna be no exception to that. They always release some shoes with really good uppers, like the Hyperion Tempo, for example. Fantastic upper, really enjoyed that shoe last year. 10 mil drop in this one and super simple looks. Very little to dislike in the upper here, no real bells or whistles. Certainly Brooks are listing this one in their lightweight performance category. And it's up for only $100 as well, which I think is great. Really good price point for a daily shoe. Though it does make me question again the price of that Hyperion Tempo. At £140 over here in the UK, it's quite a disparity in terms of the price between these two shoes. With similar use cases, I suppose. I think I might be tempted to take a roll of the dice on the Launch 8 and review another Brooks shoe for a change. It always feels good to try some different stuff out. And at that price point, I don't think I can find too many negatives. So it's a yay for me for the Brooks Launch 8. Okay, that's all four of the shoes for today. What do you make of these guys? Let me know in the comments below. A quick musical interlude for you. I dug out an old CD that I've had for years and years called Electro Breakdance 2. It's like one of these double CD compilation things, but it's so good. There's so many great tracks on there. I know you've got Soul, Eric B and Rakim, for example, and there's some Grandmaster Flash on there. Adventures of Flash on the Wheels of Steel. Awesome hip hop. Hip hop, the true original meaning of it. I really love the fact they've included Apache by the Sugar Hill Gang on there too. Whoever put it together really did have some good knowledge about that style of music. There's a little Public Enemy as well just to add a bit of bite to proceedings. And then the fantastic Breakdance Party by Break Machine. So go and hunt that one down if you can or maybe you can make a playlist with some of the tunes. But the original compilation was called Electro Breakdance 2. I wonder what Electro Breakdance 1 was like. I'll have to try and find it on eBay. Okay, thanks for tuning in today guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos. It really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.